Hello everybody, welcome to the PE Web Lecture Series. I'm Celeste and I'm very happy to have you here with me today. So yesterday I uploaded the 8 Habits of Highly Productive People Part 1 and many of you left very very nice comments and you left great ratings. So thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate all your support and all the love and it really inspires me to keep on going and to keep on creating more great web lectures for all of you. Today I'm going to start at Habit 5 which is on creating barriers to entry. Basically, it means that um, if you really want to be productive and to focus on your output, it's important that you set certain boundaries sometime because if you make yourself accessible to everybody and anybody, then it makes it very easy for people to disrupt your flow. It doesn't mean that you should just set up barriers whereby nobody can reach you at all and you become like a social outcast. That is not a way at all because ultimately we are social creatures. It's important that we take out some time for our relationships, but we also want to set some guidelines. So for example, for me, I run PE and uh, there's sometimes there are a lot of uh, different reader feedback and each reader has you know different concerns, different questions and so on. And it can be a bit overwhelming if I were to have an open communication channel where anybody and everybody can use that. So because of that, I have a certain clear channels. So for example, um, if you go to my contact page, I'll say that, uh, okay, for business inquiries, please reach me at this email um, for those of you who ordered the products and you have uh, inquiries about the purchase or you know you need uh, some help on them then send uh, the inquiries to this email which is a different email from the first one and then um, for other inquiries say questions or requests for advice I say that um, you can post them on my Facebook page but there's no guarantees that I'll be able to answer them so in a way, it's, I sort of set expectations straight. Whereas I think in the past when I first set up PE, um, there was like an open contact form which anybody could use. And what happened was that I started getting very long and in-depth emails which overloaded me because while I want to help everybody and uh, everybody who needs help, it becomes hard for me to give everybody the one-to-one -one attention that I would like. So it's impossible. I mean, if let's say, you know, someone gets one email every month, then, you know, it's sort of still manageable. But when you start getting them on a daily basis and when it's several a day, it becomes impossible to get anything done. And also, sometimes your energy uh, sort of gets disrupted for the day and it, it uh, takes you out of that flow. So it's important to create the barriers to entry. Some examples would be say, switch off your handphone when you're working or switch it off to silent mode and don't check it. Other things could be say, only allow certain people to have your, your work number or, or your mobile number because you don't want everybody to be able to reach you wherever and, and whenever they want. So uh, things like this, just you know, having certain protocols and, and set processes such that when people want to reach you, they know that um, they should structure their requests before they do so. And this definitely helps you to become a lot more productive. Now let's move on to habit six. And habit six is to optimize time pockets. Okay, so in part one, I said that all of us have 24 hours a day, but Everybody has different output based on how they utilize the 24 hours. And I always think that there are a lot of opportunities for us to maximize our time. It's just whether we see them or not. And one of these opportunities could be times where when we're just doing nothing. You know, times whereby we are just like waiting, waiting for the bus or just you know, exercising or uh, waiting for something to happen. And during these times, uh, I call these time pockets. You can actually use that time to do meaningful work. Um, you don't have to necessarily work, but you can do something that maximizes the value of that time to you. So for example, sometimes when I exercise, I listen to podcasts and that helps me to learn while I improve my physical condition on my body. So other things could be say I, I, uh, when I'm commuting, 
I think waiting is one of the worst ways to spend your time. It's basically just waiting for something to happen, and there's nothing happening. Uh, just there's nothing that comes out of it except you know getting from one place to the next, and filling that time with say reading or or listening to podcasts again, surfing some useful websites, or even just resting. You know, all, all of these are valuable activities. So that's what it means to optimize your time pockets. So if you think about your days, are there any time pockets you have that are not optimized? And chances are they are going to be. Okay, because I think all of us always have time pockets that are not maximized yet, and we need to learn how to make the best out of that. Because when you look at it, you know, thirty minutes, one hour, two hours a day, it add it adds up to a lot. And I I think I once saw something uh about how if you just study something for thirty minutes a day for X number of years, I think it's two or three years or five years, then you basically would have gotten a degree in that amount of time you studied that subject. So every little bit counts for sure. Habit number seven: set timelines. Now it's very important that you set timelines for the work that you want to be produced because. It helps you have a clear idea of when things are going to happen and what you need to do to make them happen. So, unless you're someone who is already very goal achievement oriented, you think in terms of timeline, in terms of amount of resources, in terms of milestones, in terms of the time taken it it takes to achieve something, then you really greatly benefit from setting timelines. The objective of setting timelines is not to stress yourself out. I think a lot of people give like a cop out reason for not setting timelines. They say, "Oh, you know, I feel very pressured. You know, I don't want to limit myself in that manner, and so on." And no, the intention of setting timelines is not to stress yourself out or to make yourself feel pressurized, but to give you an indicator, something to work towards, so you know how much resources to allocate and whether you're off track and on track, and then to revise your plan accordingly. So for myself. I set timelines all the time, but I don't bind myself by them. I make it open, like I I make it flexible for those timelines to be changed,、um, such as say when I reevaluate my priorities and I realize that oh this is more important for me, then I will change the timeline accordingly. So I I use timelines to serve me. I don't let myself be bound by timelines because if you do that, then you're just a slave to timelines. You're just stressing yourself out for no reason, and and that is not、uh, serving yourself at all. That is not a principle of highly productive people. Because if you remember habit number four that we talked about in part one is to tap into your inspiration. And if you are setting timelines and stressing yourself with timelines, you're not tapping yourself. Uh, you're not tapping into the inspiration, so setting timelines is important. Okay, but at the same time, it's about using the timelines to serve you. Okay, last but not least, let us go to habit number eight: automate everything possible. And this is so crucial for me. In fact, I just、uh, recently wrote an article about outsourcing. Whereby I share how I've outsourced various tasks of my business and systemized various things, and it's freed up so much of my time for more high-value work. And that is pretty much in line with habit number eight. And、um, by automate here, I'm re- really referring to two possible aspects. The first thing is automating by systems. So, for example, let's say you have bills that need to be paid, then automate those、uh, bills.、Um, To be paid by automatically every month,、um, or say for example, you have、um, appointments, you know that that you know will recur every set period. Then you should set your calendar to make them recur every say three months, one month, or one week, rather than you know manually scheduling them every day. And、uh, essentially, just using technology to serve you, because I think technology has been a wonderful addition into our life, and it has really helped automating things very easy. The second aspect of automation, I will see it as out- outsourcing, whereby、uh, it's automated because there's someone doing it for you, and you don't have to be involved. And Uh, so that can be outsourcing, and that can be say hiring an employee, or that can be say delegate, get it delegating your work to someone else in your company or someone else、um, in your life. 
So uh, doing both of this hand in hand together will really free your time up from the lower value work and focus on the high value work, which is what you want to be doing. So uh, this year, for example, um, I have focused, I think for the past few months, I've really focused on automating various aspects of my business, including, say, um, graphic design work for the manifestos on the site. Um, the quote images, I just outsourced that um, for a couple of days ago. So from next month onwards, I won't be involved in that anymore. And, um, and several other things, say, administrative work. And doing so has allowed me, uh, has given me the time and energy to focus on other stuff. And this is why, for example, we have the web lectures now. You know, if I'm busy doing administrative work, the quote images, graphic designing, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff, I would never have the time to think about the longer-term aspects of um, my business and the content creation aspect of the business, which is really where all the value is in. So I would not have been thinking about podcasts. I would not have been thinking about web lectures and um, probably would not have been thinking about the various other things that's going to come up in the future. So um, look at the things that you have in your life now. Is there anything that you feel, you know, is a bit repetitive or is a bit too low value for you and it's not really worth your time? And then ask yourself, is this work even necessary to begin with? Because if it's not necessary, you should just dump it. You know, doing something that's low value very efficiently doesn't add much value to your life because it's really low value to begin with. You should just dump them. Uh, if it's not possible, then delegate them or outsource them. And I've written a lot about outsourcing in the outsourcing article at personalexcellence.co slash blog slash outsourcing. So um, read more about that there. But ultimately, I think what I've really learned about outsourcing is that it is not about whether something is outsour outsourceable or not, but it's really about whether you are ready to let go of that task and have others do it. Because looking back, when I noticed, like uh, for all the times that I kept saying, oh, you know, I, I can't outsource this, like this is not a time yet, I realized all these times, it was really just me limiting myself. You know, all the things that I was doing, there were, there were just, there's always been people out there, you know, on like outsourcing portals who have the skills ready to do them. It's just that I myself was not ready to let go of them. And I think this year I've really embraced that concept and it's just brought so much fulfillment and meaning to my life and value to my life and uh, whereby I can now use that to create even more value for others. So this is this is a very, very big tip that I have, which is on automation and uh, uh, taking the low value work out of your life and either re uh, removing them, leaving it for the systems to be automated or uh, having other people do it. So this is it for the eight habits of highly productive people. Apply these eight habits and you're going to find that it will make you so much more productive. And I find these eight habits are basically timeless. It doesn't mean like, okay, I'm, I'm going to just spend some time focusing on these eight habits and I'm done. No, I, I find that with these habits, for every time uh, that you do them, there's always this next level that you can go into, which will make you even more productive. So for example, I might be automating several things in my business now, but there's so many other things that I can do. Uh, and, and same likewise have for the first habit, ruthlessly cut away the unimportant, focus on the important. I have been doing that, but there's always unimportant things that I can cut away further. And there's always more important things that I can focus on. So there's many, many different tiers, endless tiers, just like in personal growth. So just keep enforcing the eight habits. And the article is available at personalexcellence.co slash blog slash habits dash of dash highly dash productive dash people. And you can read the article there. So thank you so much for listening. Remember to subscribe for more web lectures like this, youtube.com slash Chua. And I look forward to seeing you guys again in the next video. Bye!